Hi everyone, it's great having you here on our online platform and I just want to remind you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already so you can get our notifications and our content. So this morning before we give and invest in the lives of others, I just want to sh share a scripture with you and the scripture is found in Deuteronomy 28 verse 12 and it says, The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of His bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but you will borrow from none. So I think that is a blessing for us that we can take on us today and just to encourage us. So this morning, there's a few ways you can give. Um, there is EFT and there is SnapScan. And right now on the screen, you will see all of those. And now on to Pastor Edwin. Good morning, Life Church and our online community. Great being with you on this beautiful morning that God has blessed us with. Uh, thank you for having us in your living rooms, wherever you find yourself. And it's great just being with you. And I know it's tough not connecting the way that we used to connect, or uh, should I say the normal way of connecting. And I know the new normal is going to look completely different, but it's just wonderful being with you. And I do know that God's got a word in season for you. It's a life-giving word. And I do pray that the Holy Spirit will just slip something into your heart today that will absolutely change your heart, your thinking, the way that you, we do things. Because I do know that in this time, it's really a time of really, you know, taking stock and just looking at what God is saying to us. And I know that He's going to take, you know, the diverse things of life and change it around for His good and for His glory. So it's wonderful to be with you. And, uh, and I, uh, I've got my beautiful wife with me uh, today and um, she's going to share a bit of a word with you in Afrikaans. You won't believe me. She's going to do that. And uh, oh, before she does that, before she does actually uh, share with you, I want to encourage you to get your communion ready because after the word uh, this morning, we are going to have communion. And uh, But you say, but uh, we don't have the stuff in home. No, 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 you can use anything. Uh, it's, it's in remembrance. It's only an emblem in remembering in what Christ has done for us. So even in water and bread, that's fine as well. And so I'm going to give over to my beautiful wife and she's going to share with you. Want daar zoveel so mensen daar buiten wat werkelijk al die gemeentes daar buiten van recht oor die land wat bemoedigende boodschappen uitstuur en dit is fantastisch om elke eens in te hoor. Maar ek het vir die Here wat kan ek vandag bring om u mense te bemoedig? En ek wil vandag net ietsie praat oor dit wat die Here gee. En dit maak dit ook 'n gebed in jou hart. U gee Jere, ik wonder hoeveel geskenk pakjes van u lee nog onopgemaak voor my hartse deur. Genade en goedheid wat u met liefde toegedraai en eenvoudig gegee het. U wat u self vir my gegee het en wat ek misgekyk het. Ek wil u raak leef, Jere. Help my om u te ontvang, om u in my, in my te hoor, sien, dink, voel en te beleef. Misschien geest van God, krijg dit dan beter recht om iets van u in hierdie wereld te leef. En ik denk in vandagse tijd is het een goede tijd om te begin om God te leef in hierdie wereld. Oor na pastoor Edwin. So, um, I think uh, she runs off, but what a word. <laughs> you can come back, you can come back, you can come back. But what a word. Because what she's saying is actually, you know what, we need to have a heart of gratitude. You know, I know it's tough and I know it's tough out there. I know so many people are struggling at this time and it's a really uncertain time as well. But you know what? What I know right now, feeling right now in my spirit is that really God is saying to us, you know what? We need to have gratitude for what He has given unto us, what He's still going to give, what He's still going to do. He's still the same God of, of, of 2,000 years ago doing those wonderful things. He's still the same God doing it today and He'll do it tomorrow and the days to come. 
And all we need to do is just trust Him. You know what? The Word of God says that we, we enter His courts with thanksgiving in our hearts and with praise. And I think sometimes we, we are so consumed about the other things in life that we miss the greatest thing that we need to bring God, gratitude. So I want to say thank you, Lord, for your goodness towards us. And we're going to pray together as we trust God, as we trust God. Father, we just pray this beautiful morning that, that you'll come and just touch the hearts of your people in a mighty way. Just to know that you are God, you are in control, and that nothing is a surprise to you. Nothing just happens without your acknowledgement. And Father, I pray truly, Lord, that, that we as your people will truly find a heart of gratitude, that we'll look at the things that we do have and not focus on the things that we don't have because, Lord, you've given us so much. And I believe there's so many things that we still need to unwrap within our hearts, within our lives, Lord, that you've given unto us, that you've actually died and laid down your life for us. And so we pray truly this morning that you'll come and touch our hearts in a mighty way and that we'll find gratitude deep within inside of us and that that gratitude will, will ignite worship and praise within our hearts on this beautiful day. And so, Father, we just commit, we commit um, this whole process, what we need to go through, um, you know, Lord, what's, what's laying ahead for us as a church and as individuals, Lord, we just commit it in your hands right now. You're our God, and we trust you. We trust you. That's why I pray this morning, Lord, the word that's being shared. Thank you for your anointing on the word. Thank you for your word this morning. Thank you that, that through your word that we are encouraged. And because of your word, we are being set free. And so, Father, I pray this morning truly that you'll just uh, let the word just burn in the hearts of your people like never before. And so we pray a blessing on your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And thank you to my lovely wife. And she's going she's gonna to cheer me from the, from the empty chairs this beautiful day. And so I was thinking about what to share and what God has laid on my heart. Last week, I shared a bit on what now, because I think what now? I think for many of us, it's what now? What's going to happen now? What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my family? And, um, and the past, past week, I've just heard so many people saying, you know, I just want to get back to normal. I want to get back to normal. You know what? I, I really do believe that this is a time of reflection, and I do believe that this time has come so that you and I can actually experience what God wants to do. And it's maybe just a time for us just to take stock of our lives and, and really just, just sit back and, and find what God is saying to you and me. And, and I do believe, you know what, when people are people's actually speaking and, and, and they're saying the, the new normal, we want to go back to our normal. I, my question is, what is normal? And that's what I want to preach on today is what is normal? Because I really do believe that we need to really define what is normal. And when we've defined what is our normal, we need to really ask this question, do I really want to go back to that normal? My prayer for you and me is this, that our lives will never be the same. It will be better. It'll be greater. It'll be stronger. It'll be more anointed for the kingdom of God. That in every aspect, every facet of our lives, it will become stronger. Because you know what? If we go back to our normal, we're going to go back to the to the normal stuff. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to go back to normal stuff. I do believe that God has got a plan through this. You know what? That God allowed this. You know, um, uh, God does, did not send this, but He allowed this so that we can just take stock of our lives so that we can find a new normal, something different, something for you and me to really hold on to. And so, and so um, I really, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so aware of what God is doing at this time. And so aware of what's, what's happening all around, and we're listening to excellent word and experiencing ex excellent word. And I do believe what the coronavirus has actually done is highlighted the areas uh, all over the world that is lacking. You know, it's, it's highlighted all over the world that there's a, medical, there's a medical thing that's lacking in the pandemic, in how we handle pandemics, how we, how we connect with one another, and how we do certain things. And so I think the coronavirus actually highlighted a lot of things. It's highlighted a lot of things in my life, which already I thought as a child of God, things that I've dealt with, things, things that I trust God with. But all of a sudden there was a, there was a disturbance because of coronavirus. It's also highlighted some things in our church that needs to change. And, you know, um, you know we, we, need to, we need to look at a couple of things and look at things from a different angle. So, so it's only highlighted the things. And you know what? It's also highlighted the things that we should not go back to, the things that, that should not be. We should change and we should, we should be better for it. You know, because the Word of God says it's from glory to glory. It's not, it's not going back. 
because our best is yet to come. And I really trust God that our best is yet to come. And I, I want to speak it and I want to declare it. Our best is yet to come. No doubt, no doubt that God wants to do a new thing. And so, and so absolutely, the new normal is going to look absolutely different. But the question is, what is normal? So what is normal? Let's go to Luke 24, verses 35 to 43 in the NIV uh, translation. And uh, there we read about the Emmaus goers that they actually went to Emmaus, the village of Emmaus, and Jesus appeared to them. And they, they actually spoke to the disciples. They came back, they spoke to the disciples, and they said to them, because the disciples at this moment, they were in a room frightened of the unknown, don't know what's going to happen to them. And so they were telling them that they recognized Jesus as he broke bread. And while they were still speaking, in verse 36, Jesus himself stood among them with the disciples, and he said this to them, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And I want you to underline that in, in, your, in your Bible. Underline it because peace be with you. It's not, it's not, it's not peace whenever we, I feel like it. No, no, no. Peace be with you. Peace is available at all times. It is available in the, in, the, in the times, in the worst times that we find our life, in the most uncertain times. Peace be with you. I do believe if we are peaceful that God can really speak to us and then he can actually lead us. Because he says this to them in verse 37, he says, They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is, it is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. And when they had said that, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still, uh, still not believing it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of boiled fish, and they took it, and he ate in their presence. And it was like Jesus was saying to them, listen, guys, it's me. I'm with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And, and I've been with you. You've been traveling with me, and you've been, man, I'm sharing my heart with you. And I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to my father to prepare a place. I am going to die. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rise again. I'm going to prepare a place for you, man. And, and the Holy Spirit's going to be sent out. I mean, I'm here just to confirm what I've said. I'm here. I am here. And at this stage, they were very frightened because they didn't know what, what was going to happen to them. And I, and I do believe that they, they were thinking about, you know what, if you read again in John chapter 21, they really went back into their old ways because, you know what, they wanted to go back to the normal. You know, I don't believe that God wants us to go back to a normal. These disciples spent time with Jesus, saw amazing miracles. And I want to say to you that Jesus was saying to them, listen, relax, relax, because the normal, your normal should look different. If you're a child of God, your normal will be absolutely different to what you're used to. And really applying the things that I've taught you over this years. And I believe that's why I said to him, why, why are you so frightened? Why do you trouble? Why, why does doubt rise up in your heart? It should not be because you know me and I know you. And I've told you, I've told you these things and I've told you what's going to happen. And I've to told you how things will happen. And so God is really just, I believe, in this portion of Scripture, just reminding us again, you know what? Hey, come on, man, child of God. Where is your faith, child of God? Why do you doubt, child of God? Do you think I cannot do what, I, what I've promised to do? And he's, he's the owner of the thousand cattle on a hill, and he will get us through anything. But I, I believe the greatest thing that he, I believe that God wants us to experience in this time is to take a massive reflection on our lives. I mean, listen, church is not just, Listen, we are church. Church is not confined to a building. Church is really living what Christ has already done for us on the cross of Calvary. It's really applying the gifting and the talents that He's given unto us for His kingdom and for His glory to know that we are here on earth, placed for purpose and His plans. And when we start realizing that, we start living that, when we start seeing it and realizing that God has got a plan for my life, He wants to use me, I want to say to you, everything will change. Everything will change. And that's what we've got to reflect on. Lord, I, I don't want to go back just being a, a nominal Christian. I don't want to just come and sit in, sit in the church and just hear the Word of God. No, no, no. I want to be church. I want to live church. I want to be Christ-like. I want my life to change. I want my thinking to change because you know what? I don't want to go back to the normal. Listen, church, my biggest prayer, and I, as I said, my biggest prayer for you and me is not to go back to our normal. Not to go, to go back to the normal things. I don't know just want to go back into a, to, to, to the normal way of doing life. No. Man, there's a greater life for us to experience, greater things to, for us to actually give. God has truly given us everything on this earth.
Listen, for his glory and for his kingdom. And all we need to do is grab hold of it like never before. And what a time. And I do believe that God is using this time for you and me to really reflect in our hearts and say, Lord, I want something new, something fresh. And I believe there's so many marriages crying out at this moment. I want something new, something fresh. I really do believe that in relationships, in homes, I want something new and I want something fresh. I don't know about you, but you know what? In our finances, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I want something new. I want something fresh because we are trusting you, Lord. And I believe this, this whole process of what's happening right now is really just getting us back into a place where we absolutely trust God. We don't know what the day of tomorrow holds. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what the future holds, but what we do know is that we do know the one who holds the future, and the one who holds the future has got a great plan for you and me. And that's what I want to encourage you with, because yeah, Jesus actually just conveying to his disciples, come on, man, come on, man, don't let doubt creep up. Don't let your normal be the normal of what you used to do, fear, doubt, whatever you used to do. No, no, I want you to really do. And then, I mean, amazing, he says to him, do you have something to eat? It's like Jesus saying, man, I've got greater things planned and prepared for you, and he has. I mean, thank you, Jesus, that we have your word, that we can read about the greater plan that you have for us. And so I want to encourage you this, uh, this, this morning and, and uh, this day for, for what Christ wants to do in and through our lives. And so I want, to, I want to ask you about the new normal. I want to ask you about your normal because, you know what, if your normal is hurt, pain, envy, um, I mean, uh, godlessness, drinking, jealousy, idolatry, gossip, then... Is that the normal that you want to go back to? I mean, are you looking forward just to have a party with your friends? Is, is that the norm? Oh, then we're missing the greatest things that God wants to do in and through our lives. That's why Paul reminds us in Romans 12 to, from New Living Translation, he says, says, do not copy the behavior and the customs of this world. It actually say, my, my, just my paraphrasing, it, it simply means this. These things do not satisfy. Why do you want to copy and follow that? I mean, I think that's really what Paul is actually getting, trying to get through to us. He says, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. You see, God wants us to think differently. That's why we can see the positive in every negative. That's why we can look at the diverse things of life and we can, we can dissect it and look at the positive stuff and focus on the positive things. Why? Because God is changing the way we think. He's changing the way we think. If we allow him, if we lay our lives bare before him, he will change the way we think. You see, you see he, says, he says, then you will know and learn uh, what's God, what God's will is for your life, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Which is good and pleasing and perfect. And let's be honest. What is the norm in this life? I'm going to just quickly click, click, just touch on three, three things. Well, I think the norm in this life is comparisons because, I mean, all over, people are comparing themselves. They compare themselves to their neighbor, compare themselves to, to, to somewhere in the work, a workplace where someone's got more, maybe you, your business, comparing your business with someone else's business, or your amount of money with someone else's amount of money. Maybe you're comparing your children with, children, with other people's children. Maybe you're comparing your wife with someone else's wife. I mean, it's always comparison. I mean, churches compare their, com, are comparing their church to another church. Uh, how many people are in this church? I mean, I mean listen, comparison... That's the customs of this world. It's comparing, comparing, comparing. I just want to compare. No, 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 no. God doesn't want us to. Listen, God wants to speak to you. He's got a plan for you individually, for individual church. He's got a plan for you. Not comparing anything with anything. There's no comparison. God wants you to have exactly. I mean, he doesn't want you to envy your neighbor's wife or envy his car. No, God's got a plan for you. And I don't, I don't want to go back to that normal. Come on, church. I don't want to go back to that normal. I don't want to compare our church to someone else's church. God has got a plan for this church as God has got a plan for another church. I don't want to be compared. Come on, we compare. We compare ministries. I mean, that, that guy, he, he preaches better than this. Come on, comparison. That's a worldly term. In the body of Christ, there's no place for comparison, but there's place for transformation of the mind so that we can fill and find what God wants us to do. The uh, other thing is confusion. I mean, do we want to go back to the norm? The norm is confusion. You know when people are walking out there without their true identity, are truly knowing who they are? They're confused. I mean, this world is, is, is so confusing around us. I mean, people's the way their status, they think. I mean, people's status on Facebook, it's complicated. <laughs> it's confusing. People don't find their identity. That's why they think that they, they are this and that and this and that. They struggle to find their identity. I mean, come on, confusion. 
confusion in every area of our lives, then also counterfeit. Because what do we really find out there? We find out there it's not the real thing. You see, we think that the reality is the things that we can touch and fathom and look at. But I want to I guarantee you it's not the real stuff. The real stuff is found in Christ. That's why Galatians 3.3 says it's so beautiful. Our real life is hidden in Christ. Our real life, our real life, who we really are is found in Christ. That's why Ephesians 2.10 says that we are His masterpiece, prepared for good works that He's already prepared for us beforehand. And that's why we need to understand and know that He's got a plan and a purpose that we don't have to compare, we don't have to be, to be confused, and we don't, have, we don't have to fall for the counterfeit stuff of this world because nothing will truly satisfy. There will always be a lack if, you, if you're not following Jesus. And I really want to encourage those who's listening to this message today. Uh, if, you don't, if you haven't made a commitment to Christ, you don't follow Christ, you know what? You're going you're gonna to try everything that this world can offer. It will not satisfy. The only thing that can satisfy is really to have a full life in Christ, to experience His Holy Spirit working in our hearts and our lives on a daily basis, to know that He's got a plan and a purpose for our lives, man, to be excited about life, and you don't know even why you're excited about life. We don't have to fall, fall, fall for the counterfeit. Oh, man, the counterfeit that you find in this world. What God has, God has got a plan and has got a purpose. Maybe, maybe, I want to define the new normal or the normal as God's purpose. God's purpose should be a new normal. And it should be not be a new normal. It should be the norm that we should have followed all, the, all along. It should have been the things that we should have put in place all along as God's people. It's to find God's purpose. God has got a purpose for you and me. And God's purposes are greater. You see, God's design is my destiny. Let me say it again. God's design is my destiny. God designed me for purpose, God designed me for a plan, and it is my destiny. And that destiny has come from a man from, a, from an early age. Uh, I'm going to just quickly just run through four things that I believe is God's purpose and our normal. It comes from birth. It's a call from birth. Um, let me read to you Jeremiah 1, verses 4 to 8. Uh, it says, before I, I formed you in the, womb, in, in, in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go and, uh, to, to everyone uh, I send you to and say whatever I command you to say. Do not be afraid of them. And I am with you, and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Listen, listen, listen. God's purpose has been already placed in our hearts as from our birth. You see, there's a calling on each and every one of us. There's a calling. God has got a calling. God has got a calling. Um, uh, David says in Psalm 139, he says, Lord, Lord, you've created my innermost being. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You see, God has got a plan with your life, man. There's something so special and unique about you that is actually God's plan and God's purpose for your life. We just need to live it. We need to believe it and live it so it can come out. 2 Peter 1, 3 says it's so beautiful. By His divine power, God has given us everything we need uh, to live a godly life on this earth. We have everything. Why? Because God has really placed His purpose within our hearts. He's already placed it. Man, in our hearts from birth, and that should be our new normal, is to know that God has called me. You know what? God didn't just call me to live out the Missio Dei, uh, the mission of God. God has called each and every one of us, wherever we find ourselves, to live out His purpose. That should be our new normal, living out God's purposes on a daily basis because I am. Am called. We should actually wake up every morning and we should remind ourselves, I'm called. I'm called for a day like this. I'm called for a place like this. I'm called for a time like this. I'm called into, the, in my, into my work situation for a time like this. For this, what God has placed in my heart. And so I want to encourage you because you know what? That's what God wants to see. That's what God wants to do on a daily basis within our life. Secondly, I, I do believe that God's purposes and God's normal is, is, grow, is it's just growing more, uh, growing a deeper awareness of what He's doing. I do believe that we miss the greatest things because we're not aware of it. We're not focused on what God is doing. And listen, listen to this portion of Scripture. This is where Joseph was actually to, taken, you know, um, sold as a slave. Uh, then he became Pharaoh. Uh, 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 he got into Pharaoh's courts, uh, became governor over, over, over Pharaoh's stuff. And here is Joseph. Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. 
And now his brothers come because there was famine in, in, in Canaan and they came to, to get some food. And, and we know all the story. And please go read it. Uh, just, just, you know, find your reference in that. But then he says this. He says this wonderful things. He says, you attended harm for me, speaking to his brothers. You attended uh, to harm me, but God intended it for good. God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, saving many lives. We ask questions. Lord, why now? Why is these things happening to me? I believe there's a greater plan. We just need to find that greater plan. It is becoming more aware. There's, there's, got to be a, there's got to be a growing awareness of what God is doing. We've got to actually sit still. The first thing we need to do, finding ourselves in a difficult situation, a difficult spot, is just sitting down and saying, Lord, what are you doing right now? Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, what are you saying to me? I need to be aware of what God is doing, what God wants to do in and through our lives. And I really want to encourage you because you know what? As we find our new normal, as we find our normal, as we find our purpose in God, it will it'll grow in more of awareness of what He's doing. I mean, I mean, we should look at the world. We should look at what's happening in the world. And we should ask questions, Lord, what are you doing right now? Or oh, Lord, what are you saying to me right now? What, what do I need to do? And I want to encourage you because it's so true that we need to grow in more of awareness because that should be a new normal. Being aware of what God is doing at a time like this. Number three is also to walk through open doors. And I do believe, do believe that God has created open doors for you and me. You see, our normal should be that God is opening up doors wherever we find ourselves. God is opening up doors for you to speak to other people. God is opening up doors to, I mean, to just to deposit something, uh, just a seed in someone's heart. God is opening up doors. We have open doors. We need to start taking the open doors. That should be a new normal for you and me. No new normal. Just taking the open doors. Now we find Esther. I mean, Israel in trouble. Esther was, uh, was uh, how can I say, pampered to become uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the queen. Um, and, then, and then Mordecai, her brother, actually said to her, listen, Haman is actually planning destruction of Israel. And you need to do something. And she actually says to him, listen, but I cannot do something. You know, if I go before the king uh, and, and, he, and he actually doesn't want me to be there, he can actually kill me. He can kill me. And I love the response. And the response um, that, that, that Mor uh, Mordecai actually replied to her. And he says, he says this. He replied to her, uh, Esther 4, verses 14 to 16. He says, For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. I love that because you know what? <laughs> and it's so, if you're not going to take the open door, if you're not going to use what God has given to you, if you're not going to be aware of what's, what's happening around you and where God wants to use you mightily for His kingdom and His glory, God will raise someone else. That's what God does. This is what He's saying to us. He says, relief will come from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. Do you really think being in the king's courts will actually save you? Do you really think that being in a worldly court will actually save you? That's what He's saying. He says, and, and, uh, uh, and who knows uh, that you have come uh, to your royal position for such a time like this. Come on, Esther. I know, I know that you're afraid. Come on, Esther. But you know what? There's an open door. You've got an open opportunity. Come on. Come on. You need to just lift. Trust God in this time. Trust that God has opened up this door for you to actually um, do something wonderful and great for his kingdom. And, and don't you believe that God has called you for a time like this? Then he says, then she replied to him, I will go to the king. I love this. She realizes, listen, God has got an open door for me. I've got this opportunity. And as she says this, I'll go to the king, even though it's against the law, because it was against the law just to, just to arrive at the king's palace or just to arrive in his, in his presence. But she says this, even if I perish, I perish. Listen, church, we need to get to a place where our new normal is this. Lord, no matter what happens to me, as long as your kingdom are glorified, as long as your kingdom is, uh, is, is really being, being advanced, advanced through what I'm doing and saying, Lord, doesn't matter what happens to me. I don't, I don't have to get the glory. I don't have to get the pat, pat on the back. Lord, as long as your name is lifted up, as long as you've opened up the door, all I need to do is just be an instrument in your hands. And so I believe the new normal would be to look at the open doors that God has created to us every single day. Do you know that at this moment, there are so many open doors that you and I can actually walk into? So many open doors available to you and me? Do you know that so many people are, are crying out, really crying out for the church to be so visible? 
It's not time for us uh, to shrink back. It's not time for us uh, to, be, to, to hide away. It's time for us to rise up and to be counted for because we are called for such a time like this. Like never before, you and I can have an input in the lives of other people. I want to encourage you because, you know, I get, I'm busy getting excited as I preach to you uh, on this beautiful Sunday because, you know what, I do believe that God is, God is really calling us. and it's, Man, it's a wonderful time for you and, and me to be alive. A wonderful time for you and me to be alive. You see, um, uh, the fourth, fourth thing that I really want to encourage you with is, 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 is really this. Uh, the new normal should be godly encounters. I want to say, and I'm just, you know, I just, you know, just filtrating in my heart. You know, it's, it's, it should have been like that all along. But we've got to yearn for godly encounters. We've got to yearn, Lord, I want to encounter you. I want to encounter you on a daily basis. I'm going to wake up today, and I want to know that this day I'm going to encounter God great, mightily, through His Holy Spirit. He's going to speak to me. He's going to lay something in my heart. I'm going to encounter you. I'm going to look for encounter, man, for places to encounter God. I'm going to search out encounters with God. It should be our new normal. Well, I love this portion in Acts 9, verses 1 to 6. It says, Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples and went to the high priest and asked them for a letter to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found anyone who belonged to the way, because that, that is what they were, were called the way, whether men or, men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. And as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice to him saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. You see, godly encounter, this changed Paul's whole life. It changed to such an extent that he wrote two-thirds of, of the New Testament. And I want to I encourage you because you know what? It changed his life. Well, how much more will it change our life if we look for, man, daily encounters with God? Daily encounters with God. It should be a normal thing. We should not be surprised when people are prayed for and they get healed. We should not be surprised. Yes, we should, we should celebrate the testimonies. We should thank God for the greatest testimonies. But we should, not be, we should actually be looking for, listen, things to happen around us, signs and wonders to happen. It should be a normal thing, not an abnormal thing. It's not something that does not, it's a thing that should be happening continually, continuously within the lives of God's people. And I want to encourage you because that should be the new normal, God's purposes. You see, God, God created me on purpose for a purpose. God created me on purpose for a purpose. So I really want to say to you, I don't know where you want to go back to, but maybe the new normal should look different to where we come from. I don't want to go back to a new normal. And I pray that this church will not be normal again, never normal again. And I know that it's going to mean a lot of things are going to change. A lot of things are, 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 are it's going to look different. It's going to feel different. Why? Because we're trusting God for greater things. We, we trust in God so that we can really walk in the newness that He's actually died for us into a place where He's actually taken us into. And I love this. Um, Maya uh, uh, Angelo actually said this. If, you, if, if, if you're always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing it is to be you, the real you. You see, if you're always just trying to be normal, you will never get to you the real you in Christ. And as Charles, um, uh, uh, I think it's Charles Stanley who said this, he says, uh, walking and speaking and being led by the Holy Spirit ought to be the normal in the life of God's children. Now I want to encourage you. It's a normal way of living. It's a normal way of living. And may we never get back to a, just a new norm because God has got so much more for you and me. And I really want to encourage you on this beautiful, beautiful day. You know what? God has got a plan and a purpose. And I just want to remind you again, don't let this lockdown time um, that we find ourselves in just go past and we've learned nothing and we've reflected on nothing. No, no. No, no, no. no. I think we need to put some stuff in place. I don't want to just come to church. And, and I just want to say this. When we get back to coming back to church, we need to come back to church with joy, with excitement. When we get together, there's got to be a, man, there's got to be a greater joy filling us up. We've got to be grateful. Um, man, 
I believe that we, we need to come to church prepared, uh, created an atmosphere already in our hearts for, for God's Spirit to move, uh, trusting God. We should actually be sitting on the edges of our seats every single time we come together, trusting God for great things. And when we're walking, we need to know that something is about to fall, something is about to happen in this place. God's going to heal people. Sight, man, people are going to get new sight. Man, we need to trust God for greater things. Not just coming to sit and fill a chair. A chair. No, that's not, that's not what we should be doing. And I do believe that God is speaking to you. Don't miss this greatest opportunity that God has created for you and me. That through this time of lockdown, through this time of diversity in this man, in the whole world, no one has ever gone through something like this. Anyone living at this stage, no one has gone through something like this. Don't let it just pass by. I do believe that God is speaking and is speaking directly to you and me. That's why 1 Corinthians 11, Paul reminds the church, the Corinthian church, he says, you need to, whenever you get together, you need to have communion because communion is a remembrance of what Christ has done for you and me. You see, what we should be doing is we should remember on a daily basis what Christ has done for us. And because of what Christ has done for us, that should actually instill, that should actually encourage us to do what we need to do as God's children. Yes, I can guarantee you that some days we will wake up, we will not feel good, but you know what? We're going to fight through this, or we're going to get where God wants us to be. Where God wants us to be is to remember what He's done for us. He laid down His life for you and me. He paid a high price so that you and I can absolutely live, so that we can absolutely know um, that our, not just that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life and we are registered in heaven, but that we have a plan and a purpose in Him. That's why He says, remember, remember what I've done for you, that my body was broken for you, that my blood was shed for you, that you can be forgiven from every sin that you've done, every sin past, every sin present, every sin to come that His grace is available to you and me. There's nothing that you and I can do to get saved. He's done it all for us. He's paid the price. It is finished. It is paid. And that's what we do when we actually take the cup in remembrance of what He has done for us. And then also, His body is a remembrance of the price that He paid, that His body was broken, that you and I can be healed, absolutely healed, that we can walk in our healing, a daily healing. It's not just, listen, it's not just a physical healing, but also emotional healing, it's a spiritual healing. I believe that what Christ has done for us, laying, I mean, His body broken for you and me, is to know and understand it is done. You can actually be reminded that I paid it in full. It is finished. And so as we break bread together today as a family, I pray that God's salvation, to know that we have a relationship, we can have a relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, that He laid down His life, that you and I can experience a new life. And that we know that through His body, that you and I, we are healed. We are healed. And I speak it and I profess it and I proclaim it over every single person listening to this message right now. You are healed in Jesus' name. And as I speak it, I just sense that God is right now just touching people and healing people mightily in Jesus' name. So we're going to break bread. We're going to have communion together. And we say thank you, Jesus, for your body. Thank you that, you that you died on the cross of Calvary. That we know as we know, Lord, that we have healing in Jesus' name. And thank you, Lord, that we can speak healing right now. As your word says, Lord, we need to, we need to, we need to, do, we need to um, just you know, to reflect in our lives and see. And Lord, your word declares that's why so many are ill and sick. Because we don't discern. We don't discern what you've done for us. And what you've done for us, you've laid down your life for us. Your body was broken, that we can be healed. And Father, I pray this morning, as we partake of the eminence, truly that we will experience healing right now, in Jesus' name. So thank you for your body. Thank you for what you've done for us, in, in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for your blood. Thank you once again, Lord. I am so glad that you saved my soul. And I'm so glad that you laid down your life, that my sins can be forgiven. And I pray, Lord, as we partake of the cup, Lord, that we'll truly know that we can have a relationship, that every single detail of our lives, listen, has been dealt with. Now, sin, sin has been taken care of as if we stand sinless before you. And so, Father, thank you as we partake to know that on this beautiful day that you laid down your life, that your blood was shed, 
for the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name. And so, Father, I pray as we end off that you're truly that that we will truly get to a place where we'll ask ourselves how a new normal is going to look like. But I pray, Lord, I pray for, Lord, as as you said to Joshua, for, for people to rise up with courage and with strength and to say, Lord, I don't want my normal to look the way it looked, but completely different in Jesus' name. I want your purposes and your plans to be my normal. I want your calling to be my normal. I want, your, I, want to, I, want, I want to have a greater awareness of what you do on a daily basis. I want to walk through open doors that you've already planned for me. And Lord, I really want to have godly encounters on a daily basis. I don't just want to be a nominal Christian. And I pray it. Lord, I pray it over everyone's life, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you that you are our provision, that you've already taken care of every single detail of our lives. So, Father, we just commit it to you in Jesus' name. We commit our church, every member, every person, Father, in Jesus' name, into your hand. We pray that, Lord, that you'll just hedge them in, Father, in Jesus' name, that they'll experience your Holy Spirit in a mighty way. So, Lord, we just commit everyone. Thank you that we can remember on this beautiful Sunday what you have done for us on the cross of Calvary. And so, Father, I just pray a blessing on every household right now. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will just, man, just touch everyone right now. Fill them in Jesus' name so that we can be so aware of who you are. So Father, thank you that our new normal will actually be what you've planned all along, that we'll walk in faith like never before, that we'll trust you for everything. So Father, we just say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I pray that you'll be blessed. And um, man, take care. We love you guys. We miss you guys. And I pray that something, man, go out. Let's make a difference for the kingdom of God. We might be locked in, But I can guarantee you, we are absolutely free to share what God has given into our lives. So have a wonderful time with your family. God bless you.